1980s in the house today, guys. I got the paperwork. Now. Unfortunately, it's some bad news, but at least I got the paperwork. The power is no longer in my hands. The power is in the paperwork now. But anyway, guys, I got some bad news. Uh, offensive line bad news. You know how I am about the offensive line, guys. That's There's nothing you can do without an offensive line. You got to have that, man. You can't run the ball. You can't pass the ball. You can't wildcat. You can't do shit without an offensive line. You can't kick a field goal. Nothing. So the offensive line has to be strong, consistent, disciplined at all times. Unfortunately, uh, left tackle Chuma Idoga, he's a swing guy, dislocated big toe, big left toe, out for six weeks to three months. Uh, that's around, they're projecting him to be around three to four months out. Uh, he'll be back around Thanksgiving. It was kind of a battle between him and Tyler, rookie Tyler Guyton. Uh, they were kind of leaning towards Tyler Gotten, but if you look on the depth chart report online, they have Chuma Idoga as the first, uh, the starting left tackle. But they knew Tyler Gotten was eventually going to take that position from him. That's what they're projecting anyway. So now he's in there. Now this is a good opportunity for him to get in there and, and show what he's got. He's Tyler Gotten's a good. He's a pretty. He's, he's had a pretty good camp, man. A uh, pretty good, strong camp. I kind of like him at, at tackle, starting at tackle. I think he'll be fine. I say go ahead and throw him on out there in the water so they can learn how to swim real quick. Um, now, the question is, the backup behind Tyler Guy, which was third string uh, uh, third string tackle, Asim Richards. So now he's going to have to prove himself. Because, you know, third when you get around the third and fourth string guys, those are the guys that barely make the team or they'll probably get cut from the 53-man roster. So uh, now they have... Tyler Guyton and Asim Richards, you know, at the uh, left tackle position. So uh, he's got to prove himself so if he wants if he wants to be on the team or be on the street. Uh, also, third string right tackle Earl Bostic was carted off today, lower leg injury. He actually stayed in after he got the injury, but something had happened a couple of series down the line, and the guy it, it was very unfortunate. And I hate when this happens. This is how a lot of linemen get hurt. He was uh, in, in the blocking uh, position, and, you know, Dak had hiked the ball, and he was getting doing his thing. You know, this was against the Rams today. We practiced against – it was kind of a tough practice anyway against the Rams. It was like a scrimmage-type practice. A lot of cussing and fighting and shit going on, you know what I'm saying? So he was, you know, in the blocking position doing his thing, and then a the guy fell on his leg. He got pushed into his leg, and that's how he got hurt. And he went to the ground, boom, real hard, and I was like, oh, shit, I saw when it happened. So – um, hopefully he'll be back. I don't think that's going to be a, you know, week, week, week long, in, weeks long injury or whatever, but I'm pretty sure he'll be back because he stayed in there, but they had to go ahead and I think he started feeling the pressure and they had to go ahead and cart him off just in case. And, but they did, we did, uh, sign, I don't want to butcher his name. First year guy, well, he's got a, he's not a rookie. He's got a year of experience on his belt. Uh, actually from the Rams, he's, uh, he's out of Arizona state. His name is Cole Cabral. Cabral. I don't. I'm sorry if I butchered his name. Six five three zero four from Arizona State. They had him as a center and offensive tackle. So maybe he's another swing guy that can kind of play both positions or whatever, which is a good thing for him. So now he's got to try to prove himself because they just signed him today or whatever. Uh, not saying that he's going to make the team or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure just for depth purposes. Uh, now he's got to prove himself to see if he's going to be on the street or, you know, in a cowboy uniform. But that's all I got, man. That's all I got with the uh, just the offensive lineman today. I'm going to kind of keep my eye out, man, about different things, important things like this. This is important. It might not be exotic like all the, you know, running back and wide receiver and cornerback, quarterback positions, all that stuff. But this is interior. This is in the trenches, guys. This is what really, really counts. These guys do all the work to make make it easy for everybody else. See, you know, that's why offensive line is so important because they make it easy for everybody else for the run game to open up. Now that we got, we don't even know what we're going to do with the run back position. We got old man Ezekiel Elliott in there who is going to be starting. They got him listed as the starting running back. We got Rico Rico Dotto still, Malik Davis still, who's having a pretty good camp, uh, which I thought that's the direction that they were going in. Or that one two punch, but. Oh, and then Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn as well. Deuce Vaughn is still out there doing his thing. He was in pass today as well. So, uh, catching passes out of the backfield and everything. So, I don't know, man. I, I just, I, I don't know what direction they're going with this running back position. But it's it's confusing me as well. So, uh, when you got an old man like Ezekiel Elliott out there 
still trying to recapture some youth and some years. Um, you make sure that his offensive line is, is very, very strong because if it ain't, he's going to struggle along with everybody else. So it is what it is, man. I just thought I'd, you know, run that by y'all real quick. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section, man. Make sure you stay cowboyed up and prayed up because you never know what the day is going to bring you. I'll look back at your boy.